Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications of distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godstock, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. It is summertime, and so I'm sure on a lot of folks' minds, we have the topic of vacation and travel. Um, and that is why I am excited to be joined today by Sashin and Rachel from Zenny. Hey, guys. How are you? Hi. Hello. Awesome. Hi, Thank Zenobia. you. Thank you for having us, Zenobia. So, you know, we have a lot of folks in the community who um, are familiar with Zenny, and some of them talk about Zenny as sort of the Shopify for travel. Um, can you explain what that means? Yeah. So Zenny uh, breaks through the barriers to entry um, that prevent people from selling travel online, right? So right now there are huge technological and um, regulatory and legal barriers that make it very hard for people to sell travel online. So we have clients, for example, closed user group communities. So these um, can be media properties, um, uh, large you know, charities, affiliations, any kind of company that has a big bespoke community that they want to be able to offer or sell travel to. We also have travel professionals, influencers, and events who use our service to instantly launch their own travel selling site. And we offer, um, as part of our service, access to wholesale rates um, across the different kinds of travel inventory, a full built-in CRM for records keeping, and uh, a blockchain-based infrastructure that allows us to instantly settle people's commissions and the vendor's cogs. Okay. And you talked about travel communities. So I think about, you know, is it something like Wall Street Journal advertises to me, would you like to go, you know, try um, wine in France or um, something else? Are those the kinds of communities that you're talking about? Very similar to that. You want to talk about it, Sachin? Yeah, yeah. But I also want to go back to the previous question a little bit, just to give a your audience here a little bit of background. I mean, the travel industry overall is so archaic, you know, and, and it's in dire need of disruption. Basically, entire infrastructure is reliant on old, outdated, complex, massive distribution channels, okay? And involving these intermediaries and, and, and offering other people to launch a travel businesses on top of that is extremely complex. So when we say a Shopee, a Shopify for travel, it's not just mere word because it's like, you're building in websites uh, which are highly complex and can handle all the travel bookings and many people can simply white label them, put their brands on. So when, when, when we're coming to the point to communities, it's not only the people who have same group affiliations or uh, things they would like to do it together, but there are um, major groups or employees. Think of like um, people in, in AAA who already are a member there they can simply activate travel ads and another additional um, uh, white label branded booking engine for their community who are saving the funds, who are saving the money on their travel spend. So there are travel blogging groups, uh, travel but, influencers. But just to as, clarify that, so a yeah. company like AAA yeah. or Costco, right? Those sort of massive closed user groups, right? They have a membership base. They have literally billions of dollars in the bank, they can afford to build a custom booking engine. Um, you know, they can afford to get lawyers to get all that inventory for them and to get all the regulatory cleared, but it will cost them millions and millions of dollars to build a nice, you know, travel experience that people are for, you know, people have very high expectations for what it feels like to inter interact with a travel selling service online because the big uh, B2C travel selling services also have billions of dollars in the bank and it shows right in that beautiful travel experience that you have booking with them. So how do other organizations that are not the size of Costco or AAA, how do they launch an engine? How do they jump on this bandwagon? It is vastly out of their financial means to build all of this. We've done it for them in a fully scalable service. So everybody can have that quality of experience that they can offer to their community. 
and they can make it really feel sort of tailored to that group and their what they want to experience. Exactly, customizable, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yes, correct. It's customizable. And they save money on top of that, or mm-hmm. make money. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to ask, so the revenue model for them is, you know, they take sort of, they offer this as a service, they take a percentage of the revenue for kind of organizing the trips or the experiences? Correct. Um, we make money by charging a subscription and we also um, get a base level of commission on the travel that's sold, you know, through our system. However, these travel resellers, they earn a larger commission than we do, right? They bring the travelers to that site. They supply them with the inventory that we've given them. And then they earn a, a commission on the travel that gets sold. Or, you know, let's say it's a corporate and they're just trying to save money. They just get that discount. Great. And, you know, I think it begs the question, so why do you need blockchain as part of this solution? Absolutely. I'll let Sachin talk about that. Yes. <laughs> so as I was, I was uh, trying to uh, uh, try to put a focus on the massive complexities involved for, on, on, the, on the travel infrastructure. So it, the root cause, the entire efficiency in travel is data, payments, and time of payment settlement. For example, if you go and make a travel booking in a large OTA, and then the recent example was COVID, uh, you go and made a booking there, and now that money moves from that online travel agency to the middleman who is a consolidator supplier, and then suppliers send it to whether it's hotels or airlines. So there are multiple middlemen involved in every time a booking is made online. So there are three to four counterparties. So every time money and data exchanges, there is delay in settlement, there is loss of record, there is miscommunication, a massive, massive inefficiency in the entire ecosystem. And there's also no single source of truth. Every one of those counterparties is using their own centralized database. And they don't even use the same booking ID for the same transaction. So the set, a single transaction can have four or five different identification numbers, which leads to an utter nightmare in reconciliation. And yeah, I think we've all experienced that, right? Absolutely. One of the most interesting data points that we learned is that in 40% of transaction, the commission that's owed to the travel seller goes unpaid or is severely delayed. Yeah. So this is a ginormous problem in the industry. Yeah. So either small guy gets hurt or a big guy in the room consolidates all the money and then send it at will to whoever the final parties are to be received. So it's that's another bigger bigger problem. So it's not equitable to all the participants in the ecosystem. So that's one of the major reasons. As Rachel said, everything is in centralized system. Everybody generates their own booking codes. Imagine post-COVID, airlines could not return the money back on the credit card. The only thing they could do is they could give you the credit for future travel. Every single travel, like you don't want to travel. Maybe you never want to travel. Three years, you're going to eat. Like, that credit was a very complex situation. So they're sitting on your money for a few years, and and you are waiting to take that travel trip. So what Zenny has built, Zenny built the entire travel infrastructure on a decentralized network. And you know why we're here. We built it on Hedder Ashdale. So every time any Zenny-powered site, or, or let's call it HedderaTravel.com, you go on that, if the customer makes a booking, that booking is attached to a DLT ledger. Every, all the data is logged on mainnet. And all of the payments is also attached to that particular transaction. So we have transaction hash. It's all attached to that. Every time money on data moves, all of the participants get the notification. Their wallet has all the record. Everybody has a single source of truth in terms of that transaction, when it happened, what time it was happened, whether the booking was refundable, non-refundable. If booking is refundable, customers simply hit, need to hit cancel, money goes back in his bank account. If it's non-refundable, all the parties get settled instantly by redeeming the booking. So it's simple and, and it, it's very cost efficient uh, because of the header network, because all the fees, gas fees are pegged to the dollars. Very important aspect. And so it's working in the back end. The end user does not need to have a Web3 wallet or any of those sort of obstacles that we've seen to broader adoption of some of these technologies. Yeah, that was one of our biggest mantras going in is that nobody needed to learn about blockchain to benefit from blockchain. I like that That mantra. Yes. 
we made it uh, so web, web two friendly that there is no web three angle to it. You see dollar to dollar. You don't see like a coin or token who is going up and down in value. You see a very clear value proposition on every single aspect of that transaction uh, within our ecosystem. And you talked, Sasha, a little bit about, you know, the way that the fees are denominated on Hedera. Um, was that the sort of the selling point in terms of using Hedera as your ledger or were there other things that compelled you? Uh, there were three major factors. Uh, one, um, when we started looking for um, a, a blockchain which could uh, solve our use case and support the volume, we were about to hit. So transaction per second was one. Um, gas fees was another. And also we were a very environmentally conscious company. Recently, we all have seen the wildfires in Canada and all the smoke. We thought we would want to choose a blockchain, which is um, eco-friendly, you know? Yeah. And can you share with us a little bit about what the development process has been like? You know, I think we, a lot of times we talk to sort of Web3 native apps and, you know, it is just, they, they sort of start from scratch and everything is, you know, is Web3 native. This, I think, is really interesting, you know, as you're, I would imagine you have developers of all sort of different flavors and, and thinking about different parts of the application. How was it integrating Hedera into the application? Well, a great question. Um, so a great community, by the way, such an amazing support we received from the entire community. It was very easy to find. Um, the technology tech stack is fairly um, easily uh, you can find the resource to build the tech, right? Our use case had a lot of complexities involved in terms of the infrastructure is Web2. All of the mechanics is on Web2, and we have to either parallelly build or mimic what is on the Web2 and Web3 and, and transact all of that data, and they communicate seamlessly between each other. It took us, I guess, from vision to design to inception almost 12 months, Rachel, I imagine 12 to 14 months. Really more than that. <laughs> more we than we that, started right? yeah, meaningfully building. Yeah, it took us near, nearly a year and a half to get everything really months, right. yeah, going. Yeah. And this is a ro this is a robust, highly scalable application, right? You're not gonna toss this out there in a few months. It, that's that's the, and and we're and we're glad that it took so long because if it wasn't so hard to build, everybody would just build it. And also you need to have all the infrastructure to build on top of it. So both kind Absolutely. Of hand in hand. And so as you all think about, you know, you're, you're sort of, you're now engaging with these communities. I'm sure you're hearing feedback from them on, okay, this is great. And now, you know, I think I could also use X, Y, and Z. Um, what do you see for your roadmap going forward? We have two major, major things that we think, where we think that the Web3 element of this product is going to be massively differentiating, even on top of the instant settlement of commissions, which is a huge value add to, to people in our community. But um, we are working on blockchain-based rewards um, and NFTs. Um, so, so bookable, travel that can be converted to transferable NFTs. Very exciting. And, you know, I think I feel like frequent travelers also sort of want to demonstrate all the places that they um, have gone. You know, I was a little bit sad. Uh, my last trip, they didn't, they, I didn't get the physical stamp at one of the places on the passport, right? Because it was, I mean, they're like, it's all electronic, just go. Um, but yeah. you know, I but this like, is very different that's right. because what NFTs have been to date is art, right? It has been a, a commemorative stamp. It has been a picture. This isn't what we're talking about. We're talking about buying a hotel room that you can then sell on an exchange as an NFT, right? So it's a contract. There's a totally, totally different application um, of this tech because at, at, the, at, you know, at its core, that is what NFTs are, right? It's an ownership contract. And so you want to talk about it, Sajan? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Zenobia, imagine you booked a hotel in Hawaii uh, for the New Year's and you spend like 10 grand and it's not refundable booking. Uh, and if you didn't buy any travel insurance and unfortunately you have to cancel your trip, change in plans, you have to forfeit all $10,000 worth of travel. And a hotel is expecting you and trying to make money and blocking the room for you 
because it's not refundable, you're not going to go and cancel it. You just got to keep it just in case. So they both are losing. You're losing money, they're losing opportunity to business. So once you convert your booking into NFT, if you happen to book that uh, Hawaii booking on Zeni platform, you just convert that booking into NFT, how that whole thing became transferable, tradable, and booking can be modified to someone who is willing to go to Hawaii during that period of time. Uh, maybe it's one room, two adults, and somebody's looking for exact same thing. And and the prices might have gone up than the, from the time you have booked. So now you either sell it at a higher price or cut your losses and just give it to somebody. And usually you wouldn't sell it at a higher price if this time has passed from the day you booked and what the price is today is. So the very nature of having this fluid travel demand and supply met through the unique NFT marketplace or pool is 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 what we're bringing to the table. We have more than 800 airlines, um, 2 million hotels integrated, uh, more than 300,000 car rental locations are available on Zeni, 400,000 activities worldwide. It's it's a massive um, thing we have built and we have, we're bringing cruises on soon. So just to give you, it's like a game changer for a Web3 economy because now every booking you can actually convert into NFT and resell it. Yeah, we had an interesting experience. Uh, Gatwick Airport shut down the other night. They had air traffic control, had a glitch. Nothing could come in, nothing could go out. We were stuck. We could not get to Gatwick. Our hotel was not refundable at Gatwick. Um, you know, we tried to call, uh, they said, sorry, you're going to have to get through to the local desk. I'm sure the local desk was very busy because they had a bunch of people now stuck at Gatwick who couldn't get a hotel and I couldn't get through to them to tell them I'm not going to be there. So, um, I mean, this is a, you know, this is spot on in terms of as you hear sort of the summer, challenges of travel and people getting stuck. And, you know, there were whole plane fulls of people who now were at Gatwick overnight who had no place to stay. And the ability to do that and the hotel not have to worry about it, right? They can't give you a refund because they don't know if they'll be able to rebook it. But certainly if you do it direct, that uh, takes a lot of the hassle out of their side too. No, absolutely. But let me let me correct a uh, little bit on, on the direct. So direct side is coming. That's the phase one is we have middlemen's we have integrated. Through them, we have all the connections. Um, direct is the next step. We will be having it. Um, but this, they are the conduit at this moment, you know. Um, and soon, soon, like literally that's our goal. Turn on direct as soon as possible because it just, just creates a very simple flow of uh, system. But... And I just want to go back to the payment side, which is already live. Yeah, go ahead, Rachel. I don't want to overstate the simplicity of this. This is a <laughs> this is going to be a big undertaking, especially you brought up flights. You know, flights have a lot of regulatory issues. There's, you know, do not fly lists. There's, you know what I mean? So we're, we are not naively saying, oh, this will be so simple to do that. We have a flights partner who is excited to work with us to try to develop this functionality, but it's, you know, this is not a simple it's long, thing. Long way, yeah. It's going to be, a, it's going to be first a, NFT would come in hotels, um, not, exactly. not flights. That's the, yeah. that's the first product market we'll see. And then everything else will start slowly, slowly based on adoption, based on also the part, winning partners on the other side who would allow us to, to make it transferable. Cause they, it's an, ancillary income they never had in the past that's possible um carrot for the industry to get go this way you know right and there was i mean there's literally today i think there's no there's no solution right and there is this is a huge problem so um yes having just lived that nightmare this is very exciting yeah yeah we we look forward to a future where that all exists amazing well, I have taken quite a bit of your time today. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our community before we wrap up? Or if they want to engage, um, you know, and, and learn about this, where should we send them? Uh, they should please come visit us at www.zeni.com. That's X-E-N-I.com. And they can learn all about us. Uh, and certainly feel free to reach out to us, um, you know, directly from there. 
Sachin, Rachel, thank you so much for joining us and please keep us posted on your progress. Thank you so much. Great talking to you. Thank you. Lovely meeting you, Zenobia. Thank you. Hey.